White van drivers. I don't know, they think they own the road with their flashing lights and their sirens. <laughs> oh, there's been an accident. <laughs> there fucking will be. <laughs> of course, the thing they never do on soaps is watch TV, and that's because they'd see all their dead friends on the bill. <laughs> Have you just spotted the AIDS? Well done. <laughs> Whenever I see a sticker on the back of a car saying Princess on board, it always makes me think of Diana. <laughs> I always think, don't upset Prince Philip, you'll be fine. <laughs> what? I didn't fucking kill her, don't give me a hard time. What superpower would I most like to have? I've given that quite a lot of thought. I think that's the sort of thing men think about quite a lot. What superpower would be best? I think invisibility would be the coolest superpower to have. <laughs> and really, the question is, if I was invisible, what would I do second? <laughs> I think we all know what I would do first. <laughs> Let's face it, if I was invisible, they'd think the ladies' changing rooms were haunted. <laughs> Where's all this ectoplasm coming from? It's <laughs> Something just tapped me on the head. <laughs> Manners cost nothing. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas, and I'd like to share some of my ideas with Glasgow this evening. Yes, I'd like to share some ideas with all, all of you good people. I'm working on a book at the moment. I'm working on a book It's about a zombie that comes back from the dead, but the twist is the zombie is the good guy but apparently it's already been done. It's called the Bible. <laughs> it's annoying, isn't it? I've had an idea for a TV show. It's called Jim'll Fix It. <laughs> it's just me spaying cats. The first guy that persuaded a blind person they needed sunglasses, he must have been a hell of a salesman. <laughs> There's a lot of problems in the world, so I like to do a little bit of problem solving every day, try and make the world a slightly better place. British women, that's you ladies, British women last year spent £280 million removing unwanted body hair. Surely it would be cheaper and easier just to move to Germany. <laughs> if you're worried about putting on a few extra pounds and you want to be ready for next summer with your beach body, why don't you visit Somalia and get some fucking perspective? <laughs> There's people with real problems, you fat cow. I've solved another problem. It's only a little thing, but little and often with problem solving is probably the best way to do it. Um, I've invented a bird table for my back garden. It's three foot tall and it saves a fortune on cat food. <laughs> i tell you who I think should team up. Neighbourhood Watch and Peeping Toms. <laughs> it's a good idea, isn't it? A marriage made in heaven. And it would add a whole new dimension to the term curtain twitching. Because curtain twitching could mean checking up on the neighbours, seeing everything's OK. Or curtain twitching, female masturbation. <laughs> I feel we've crossed a line, haven't we, Glasgow? We've... <laughs> we've definitely crossed a line. Facts. We've all got loads of facts inside our heads. It's something to do with living in this internet age. Uh, British people are at least one inch taller than we were 20 years ago. And that's because 20 years ago, we were all children. <laughs> 40% of people use their mobile phone to cheat on their partner. I use Mr Tinkle. Mr. Tinkle is just a silly name I've got for my tummy banana. <laughs> Most bingo winners don't tell their other halves about their windfall, and that's because their husbands are dead. <laughs> I 
There are 427 licensed professional jockeys currently working in the UK. If you laid them all from end to end, they would stretch from here to here. <laughs> An iguana can stay underwater for 28 minutes or longer if you don't mind it dying. <laughs> Interesting little fact for you obsessive Star Trek fans are known as... Virgins. <laughs> Sorry. Are you a big Star Trek fan? Yes. But, you, but how, how old are you? Do you mind me asking? You seem like... Eight. What, sorry? Twenty. Twenty. Right. So, so definitely not a virgin in Glasgow. <laughs> what, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a secretary. You're a secretary? Yes. Nice. Is it 1950 already? <laughs> <laughs> What? 2010, actually. All right. You seem, you seem a bit chippy. <laughs> oh, it is Glasgow, sorry. Uh, I'd love to chat more, but I'm at work. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this will cheer you up. <laughs> oh, you've gone for that. Nice. <laughs> what a lady. Let's talk about language. I'm slightly obsessed by language. I spend my life toying with it and messing around with it and, and trying to, you know, write jokes for you good people to laugh at. A lot of people don't like it when language changes. A lot of people don't like it, don't like Starbucks, for example, because what was small, medium and large is now tall, grande and venti. But I like the fact I've now got a tall cock. <laughs> That's taken away a lot of the stigma. You've got to be very careful in how you express yourself, because you could be saying the same thing, but if you pick the wrong words, you could cause offence quite inadvertently. I'll give you an example. I'll read you two sentences. The first one is entirely inoffensive. The second one, well, it could be misconstrued. I know, heaven forfend. But they both say the same thing. Interesting. I fell into a hedge, cut my face, and I can only partially remember the evening. It's fine, isn't it? Much better than saying, I fell into a bush, got gash on my face, and can only remember snatches. Doesn't maternity, maternity makes it sound like you're going to be fat forever. <laughs> and some of you will be. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr and uh, I'm announcing a new tour. It's called Jimmy Carr Laughs Funny because, you know, I do. I go to jimmycarr.com for dates and tickets and then, uh, you know, I guess buy a ticket and come and see the tour. I love funny, so can you. Come and see me.